If your SSH login is still using a password, that needs to change right now. I'm gonna show you how to swap that out for a secure SSH key pair and disable both root and password logins so that only your private key can access your server. If you've been following along in this series, let's go ahead and access your remote server. Otherwise, a lot of these concepts will still apply to you, especially if you are running a modern version of the Ubuntu server operating system as we are here. Uh, you can always go back and watch some of the previous videos for more context too. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, we are running as the root user, which in itself is a security vulnerability. Root is the most powerful user. And if somebody accesses that account, uh, they could permanently lock you out of it, for example. So that we need to change. And in order to do that, we can add another user with the add user command. And I'm gonna add a user called Tony. So go ahead and pick a password for that user. Nothing will show up. You can go ahead and hit enter when you're done and then confirm that password, hit enter. And then you can give your user a name and a lot of this other stuff is kind of outdated so you could just leave them blank. All right, is the information correct? You can just hit enter because the Y is capital. And now we have a new user called Tony. So in order for this user to have elevated privileges like root, we want to add him to the pseudo group. So we can do that with the user mod dash a capital G pseudo Tony hit enter. And now that user has pseudo privileges. All right. So up until this point in the tutorial, we've been accessing our remote server via the cloud console that's built into DigitalOcean. but let's switch on over to a, uh, an SSH client that's native to the operating system that you're working with. I'm on a Mac. So I'm going to open up a terminal window so I can go here to the spotlight type terminal, hit enter. That's gonna open up off screen here. Um, if you're on a Windows computer, you can open up a command prompt and do the same thing. And in both cases, what we're gonna do is type the SSH command and then the user that we just created, Tony, at either your IP address or your domain name of your remote server. In my case, it's lulanta.org and then we'll hit enter. And the first time you do this, it's gonna ask, are you sure you want to continue connecting? You can go ahead and type yes, hit enter and then go ahead and type or paste that password that you just created for that user, then hit enter. And just like before, we are now logged into that remote server, but the problem still exists. We logged in with a password and we do not want to log in with a password because somebody could guess that password. So let's get out of here and let's create that much more secure SSH key pair. And we can do that with the SSH dash key gen command. The algorithm type that we're going to use is ED25519. We're not going to get into what that means. It's just a secure algorithm. And then we'll add a comment here just to keep things organized. And we'll say this is, uh, for, in this case, my digital ocean droplet. Go ahead and enter. And as you can see here, it's asking where to save the key. Now, the default is in this directory, in your home directory, in a, a hidden directory under there called .ssh with this file name. Uh, I already have an SSH key in there called that. So I'm just going to rename this. And I suggest for you to, for more organization, to copy that path. And then just for, again, organization purposes, let's call it droplet and then hit enter. And it's going to ask for a passphrase for that. So you can have it empty as it says, but for an additional layer of security, I do recommend typing a password for this as well. And then you're going to go ahead and confirm that. All right. And as you can see here, our private key has been saved right here. And then our public key is in that same directory, just with a dot pub extension. Now, the next thing we want to do is copy that public key to our remote server. So that way it knows in advance that uh, we are allowed to be connecting to this server. And we can do that with the SSH dash copy dash ID command. And it's going to be the same syntax as before your username at your domain name, in my case, lulanta.org, hit enter. And it's gonna go ahead and try to install that and ask you for your password. And in this case, it was successful. It says number of keys added to the remote server was one. And it helps us out here. It says, now you can try logging into the machine with the typical command SSH user at domain name. Hit enter, and this time it will not ask us for a password because we are using that key that we just generated. All right, so now that we're on our remote server, let's go ahead and lock down our SSH configuration even further to explicitly disallow passwords and not allow root to log into the system. So uh, all this configuration is gonna happen 
inside of the etc ssh sshd underscore config directory. And when we try to open this file without being sudo, it's gonna say it is unwritable. So let's get out of there. We have to prefix this command with sudo to give us those elevated privileges. And then it's gonna prompt us for that user's password. Type that in, hit enter. And now we can make modifications to this file. So there's gonna be a few modifications that we're gonna make. So let's scroll on down here. Permit root login, that's the first one. We're gonna change that from yes to no. And then moving on down, uh, this line here that says password authentication, yes. I just wanna disable that and again, explicitly say no. Same thing with permit empty passwords, we'll make that no. And then this KBD interactive authentication, this used to be something um, called challenge response authentication that's now been deprecated. But this, we also want this to say no. KBD stands for keyboard, and because this is related to passwords, we just want to turn that off as well. And then still moving down, use PAM, we want that to be no as well. X11 forwarding, this is if you want to uh, display a remote graphical user interface over SSH. Um, if you want that, you can do that, but I'm gonna turn that off as well. And then all the way at the bottom here, just for good measure and to be very explicit, I also like to add authentication methods, public key, and this only allows public key authentication for the server. And then I also like to add allow users. And the only user that's allowed to log in via SSH is Tony. All right, let's go ahead and save this file. Control X, capital Y to save it, hit enter. And now let's go ahead and exit out of the remote session. And we're back onto our local computer couple tests here just to make sure everything's working. Let's try to log in via SSH with a fake account, right? So fake, this user doesn't actually exist. Mulanta.org, hit enter. And as you can see, it's prompting a perfect password. I'm going to keep this in here. We forgot to restart the SSH service. So let's go back onto our server with an account that works and do that with the system CTL command, restart SSH and double mistake, control C out of that. We need to have pseudo privileges to do that. So pseudo system CTL restart SSH to actually apply those changes. I'm gonna type in Tony's password, hit enter. And now those changes have taken effect. So let's exit out of our remote session back onto our local machine and let's try to log in with a password with the fake account, hit enter and it's gonna say permission denied. Denied, we only allow public key authentication. Let's try another test with root. This is explicitly disallowed, hit enter. Same type of thing, permission denied. The only user that's ever gonna be allowed to log in here is with Tony, and that's because we did the SSH key generation and we copied the ID over to the remote server. Now, I've been doing this for years and I love teaching what I know, but there's so many directions that we can go with this. We could do a static HTML website tutorial. We could make a dynamic website with PHP. We can code a website with Python. We can go deeper into server administration and security. So what I did was I put together a survey for you guys so I can get a better idea about what your needs are so that I can cover some of these topics in a future video. So go ahead and check that out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in the next video.